I faced the young man. Outside of the scruffy attire, he was a fairly attractive young man. More so, however, I saw a demonic taint within him. This man, who wasn't like a Munda, piqued my interest. He had no symbols or packs etched into his flesh like a Munda, nor did he carry a continuous scent of sulfur about him. I explained to him. We were hired, but Amunda interrupted me. My expertise was requested, Amunda said, approaching the newcomer. I had to thank Amunda. Having him and our deception kept me from accidentally exposing us because of this unknown variable. I rolled my eyes. Yes, of course, master. My apologies. With welcomed contempt, the newcomer mocked Amunda. Fancy tattoos you have there. I can't imagine what weird basement sorcery gathering he found you two at. As Amunda furrowed his brow, I did my best to suppress a laugh. I'll have you know, Amunda defended. I have done this before, boy. He narrowed his eyes. I'm far more practiced at this than you likely are. Ignoring Amunda, I answered the man's question. The two of us, as a matter of fact, escaped from a Vatican prison. Why... Was I there, my dear apprentice? Amunda asked, clearing his throat. My agitation was rising, but I had to keep the act up. Because you were tasked to summon forth a demon, I grumbled. Which I did, Amunda celebrated, back to his old form. A truly vicious little demoness, he added. Who else escaped, I interjected, to bring Amunda down a notch. And still managed to take down an angel... I cut Amunda off before he could continue and give away too much. But you are, I paused, locking my eyes with the newcomer. Far more interesting. What exactly are you? I asked, giving him a sweet smile. My name is Alec, he began, before Minister Dentry appeared. His name is Alexander, and yes, my dear, he is special, Minister Dentry announced. That's why I brought him here tonight. Because of the things I have heard about him. What have you heard? Alexander asked. That you have a very special gift when it comes to demons. What would that gift be, Joshua? Alexander continued. With a grin, Minister Dentry replied. I haven't quite figured that out yet, but I am not fretting about that. Let's get this party started, he beamed. Amunda motioned to the circle he had drawn. Mr. Dentry, if you would stand by the circle and think of the name of the demon you wish to barter with, we can begin. Let's keep things within reason, yes, master? I grimaced, recalling how Amunda reached too high last time. While the circle he drew was weak, that didn't guarantee things would go according to plan. The last time you reached too high, you summoned a concubine rather than the demon in question, I reminded. Do you mind repeating that? Alexander asked his head turning towards me. This man couldn't know anything about our succubus, could he? I grinned to him. My master's greatest accomplishment was attempting to summon one of the seven crowned princes of hell, but instead he called forth his concubine, a powerful and rather ravishing demoness. I recalled the beautiful succubus who passed my cell. I envied her so. We tracked her here, She's quite powerful. As I recalled the succubus and pulled the feather from the angel out from my sleeve, this came from the angel she defeated during her escape. I slowly spun the large feather back and forth, watching as the white and black sides of it contrasted so beautifully. Does your master's accomplishment have a taste for frat boys? Alexander questioned. He must have been tracking the succubus too. Did he have a lead? He must have been closer to her than Amunda. Very likely, I said with my eyebrow raised. Have you seen her? I very much need to speak with her. I explained, as I closed the distance between Alec and me. I think if she is powerful enough to beat an angel, then perhaps you should steer clear, Alec warned. He was aware the feather wasn't some bauble, as he eyed it curiously. So tell me, what kind of plans do you have for that feather? I smiled. He knew far more than Amunda. He was an intriguing man. Before I could find out more from him, 
or see if he could serve as an ally or fodder. Minister Dentry interrupted. Will you two quit your bickering and focus on the task at hand? I brought you three here for a reason. Fine, I will get your goddamn demon, Alexander said, as he reached into his pocket and from his jacket pulled out a bottle of blood. My eyes went wide as I saw this. Swirling within the human blood was the blood of a demon. It was some kind of natural mixture, as if they drew it from someone with a demonic lineage. Where did Alexander get such a thing? In a rather proud moment, he turned to Amunda. This is how real sorcerers summon a demon. My eyes went wide. That was too powerful for our purposes. Before I could act, Alexander had already poured a few drops out of the bottle and into the salt of the circle. Amunda shot Alexander a dirty look as I looked on helplessly as the blood sunk into the salt. And what is that? Amunda scoffed. The ground shook as the salt sucked in the blood. That's, Amunda began, never happened before. Why, actually bringing something powerful? My stomach sank. Even though he activated the circle, no one had spoken the demon's name aloud. Things weren't terrible. I could suggest a lesser demon quickly and we wouldn't be in over our heads. I tried to give a name to the spell, but someone had already given a name. Wait, I turned to Minister Dentry. Who did you summon? I stumbled back as the ground shook once more. Heat burst forth from the floors, the salt glowed and melted. One who can do what needs to be done, Minister Dentry announced, to bring about the apocalypse. The Destroyer. My eyes widened. There was only one well-known destroyer that Dentry could even know about. Christian's demonic knowledge is limited. So if he was only referring to the Book of Revelations, that meant there was one creature he could speak of. You called upon Abaddon? I shouted. Yes, Minister Dentry shouted in joy. The complete fool. Because when I do, the time of revelations will finally be at. A thunderous boom from the circle interrupted Minister Dentry's preaching. Thankfully. I rushed to Alexander, grabbing him, giving him a desperate glare. Whatever you did, undo it. Undo it now, I growled. I want to serve a demon lord, not get destroyed by one of their purge-everything flunkies. The smell of burning wood filled the air, and I turned to see the summoning circle was now burning up. The salt had melted into the floor, searing the surrounding wood, and I saw the name of the demon now burning forth from the other side of the floor in the center of the circle. Abaddon. Amunda shouted, This is far more potent than the succubus I called forth. I need help to bind it. Amunda was an absolute moron if he thought he could bind Abaddon to him. No human had that capacity. None alive, anyway. If I knew that crazy minister wanted to summon him, I would have never ever come here, Alexander argued. The regents I had were designed to pull a lesser demon. I had nothing potent enough to draw forth Abaddon. While the men bickered about who was more responsible than the other for our impending doom, the ground jostled sending a stage light hurtling towards the ground. I staggered back, grabbing a curtain to steady myself as the ground shook beneath me. Expecting this to continue, I slipped my heels off. Whatever was about to befall us, I'd need to run without fear of snapping off a heel and winding up some sad, sorry damsel in distress. A dark hand reached out from the circle. In any other circumstance, this would have thrilled me. But Abaddon wasn't a demon that cared for bargains, reason, or souls. Abaddon had only one goal if they summoned him. A pair of massive black wings spread out of the hole, followed by a pair of huge hands grasping out of the circle. He looms out, massive iron armor stuck to his huge body, rusted and tarnished, portions burned by fire. The face on the creature is beyond hideous, distended like a horse, but with sharp predatory teeth. Behind a huge scorpion tail rises out as massive hoofed feet crash against the floorboards, snapping them beneath his weight as he roared at us. Minister Dentry approached Abaddon with little care. Well, I thought to myself, at least he will die shortly. Oh, happy day, Minister Dentry cried happily. 
The end times can finally begin. Now, demon, break the seals and begin the time of tribulation. As if my disgust for humanity and the faithful could not get any more intense, a new level of hatred dawned on me. The fool thought he could bind a demon of hell, all to bring about his version of the end times. Abaddon roared at Minister Dentry, knocking him flat on his ass. Hey, Minister Dentry cried out. You are bound to me, demon. Trifling mortal, Abaddon bellowed. Your arrogance will be your undoing. I grinned as Minister Dentry held his hands up uselessly as Abaddon crushed his skull beneath his mighty hoof. At least I got some satisfaction for the evening, watching Dentry's face twist into a look of absolute fear and dread as the very thing he called forth murdered him. At least this part of the plan had gone well enough. Dentry was dead, and that was one soul paid to Asmodai. Now this world shall burn at the hands of Abaddon, destroyer of creation. The world burning with me, in it, didn't fit into my plans all too well. I was still eight souls in the hole. I couldn't fulfill my debt if I was dead. Amunda was staring at Abaddon, with wide eyes shocked and proud of what he felt he called forth. Are you going to gawk at him all night? Alexander shouted. Amunda stammered. I didn't have regents capable of pulling such a potent demon. This is... He stumbled over his words. Beyond my imagination. Fear set into him as the gravity of the situation made itself clear. I put an end to the bravado that surrounded me and threatened to kill all of us. If both of you had spent less time bickering and more time sending the destroyer of creation back to hell, it would be most appreciated. Both men turned their attention to me as I glared at them doing my best to wear my indignation proudly upon my face. I'll buy time. Figure something out, Amunda said to me as he approached Abaddon. Rather noble of him to sacrifice himself. At this point, I turned my focus to the competent summoner. If I would lose Amunda, I'd hide behind Alexander going forward. Great demon Abaddon, Amunda blustered. As the summoner whom hath called you forth, I bind your will to mine. Submit to me. I'm sure that would work, Alexander shouted with a heavy helping of sarcasm. Men, I thought to myself. Alexander had his bottle of blood once more and now scrawled a sigil on the floor. It was a binding sigil, I realized. As much as he mocked Amunda, Amunda at least realized that his attempt was merely stalling for time. He's not a dog, I explained. He's a demon and a damn powerful one, I argued. Is your blood even potent enough to send him back? Do you have any better ideas? Alexander snapped. Maybe Amunda was worth keeping instead of Alexander. False ego was better than ego with actual talent. He wasn't one to tolerate chiding, that was certain. While I had plans to use the angel's feather in some dark ritual that would corrupt it fully, I needed to rely on its purity. Dark cannot cast out dark, and I am forced to ask an angel for help. I reached for my feather. I have this, I said begrudgingly. I had other plans for it, but all things considered. Despite my offer, Alec drew his binding circle. I'll admit, it was a powerful circle, and it would have bound just about any demon to it. It would have held firm too, allowing us time to escape or unmake the summoning circle, sending the demon back to the pit. But Abaddon wasn't just any demon. Abaddon's hysterical cackle emphasized this, which he let loose in reaction to Amunda trying to bind him. I turned just in time to see Abaddon's mighty tail crash into Amunda and send him hurtling towards Alec. Amunda's body barely missed me as he flew like a ragdoll through the air. Amunda crashed into Alec and the pair tumbled two meters away from the circle Alec had drawn. Murda! I cursed as I made my way towards them to see if either of them, or both, were dead. I pulled Amunda off of Alex, finding the pair alive despite the circumstances. We will need to work together, I grimaced, finding both of them, while not dead, not faring well. The circle wouldn't work unless we had some kind of miracle, and now I knew the feather was our only choice. It was that or die, and I wasn't really in the mood for death. Before I could break down the new plan, the ground shook and I turned to see Abaddon advancing towards us. 
His hoof fell upon the sigil that Alec had drawn, causing him to halt. Did it somehow work? The sick grin which spread over Abaddon's face informed me that no, it had not. He moved his hoof away, and the sigil broke with little effort from the mighty beast. Amusing mortals, Abaddon taunted. Quite amusing. I took a step back as the demon advanced on me. Unlikely as it was, maybe I could reason with it, show who I belonged to. I reached to reveal the brand on my shoulder. It was unlikely to save me. He'd most likely laugh at my misfortune and send me to suffer at the hands of Asmodai. Before I could display who I served, something had pushed me away from the path of Abaddon. I tumbled to the ground. A grunt and the familiar sound of snapping bones emanated from where I just was. I turned back to see Abaddon now crushing Alec's chest. Even without Alec's actions, my life might not have been in immediate danger. But now, we might be down an actual summoner, and the summoner who brought this creature forth to boot. With a glare, I shouted at Alec, who now found himself pinned below Abaddon's heavy hoof. Very noble of you, but it doesn't fix our situation. I heaved a sigh. I had hoped to twist this relic, or use it as an offering to the darkness, as they could use it as they saw fit. Now, however, I had to do the opposite. I had to evoke the spirit within the feather. I cast my dark spirits away from myself, so that channeling the divine spirit within wouldn't destroy them and held the feather firmly in my hand. Evoking spirits isn't hard. If the spirit was keen on the act, then it was an even better evocation. But to evoke a spirit properly, one needs to know the spirit's name. I hope the angel would whisper to me, otherwise I'd die. With the feather firmly in hand, I took a deep breath, whispering to myself, I guess it's now or never. Alec coughed up blood while Abaddon taunted him. You stink of mongrel's blood, to think a creature like you would bring me forth, as Asmodai's little whore fails to break the first seal. As I stand before you, I began, hoping to get an idea of the spirit's name as I tried to bring it forth. Almighty spirit. Nothing so far. This wasn't going well. I closed my eyes and continued the evocation focusing on bringing the spirit from the feather. Bless me with the wisdom to understand you. Grant me access to your kingdom so that I may communicate with you. Keep me safe. I felt lightheaded and I could swear I heard my mother's voice somewhere in the back of my mind. I opened my eyes to see the feather now glowed. Progress was being made. Progress that burned my skin as the feather charged itself with holy power. But progress nonetheless... Abaddon's laughter broke my concentration, briefly. You, attempting to invoke the spirit of Enoch? He glanced at me, ignoring Alec for the moment. Laughable at best. Alec sat himself up and bit his hand. Blood pouring from the wound, he shouted at me. I don't know if this will work, but dip the feather into the blood. Abaddon stood between me and Alec. This was why I removed my heels. I ran straight at Abaddon and slid between his massive legs. I got to my feet and barely dodged Abaddon's mighty tail before I got to Alec's side. Despite all the things that had gone wrong, Abaddon had made a grave error. He told me who the feather belonged to. Surround me with the light of grace and the divine guide as I enter. A coolness settled over me that reminded me of the angel who stared into my soul at the Vatican. Despite this, I continued... Your plan I evoke you, great Enoch. The feather was white hot in my hands. It was as if I was holding fire. My fingertips felt like they were about to burst into flames. I held the feather over Alec's blood, releasing it from my grip, and watching as the glowing object landed in the blood. The glow that had enveloped the feather now spread into the blood which it had landed. The blood boiled, and a bright light flashed from the feather. A shockwave burst forth from the feather as it made eye contact with the blood, dazing me but knocking Abaddon to the ground. The mighty demon was down on his hands and knees, not knocked out but certainly dazed by the burst of power. Alec grunted out, Where the hell did you get that feather? My hands still throbbed from what felt as if I were holding hot coals in them, and I explained, An angel in the Vatican, a powerful one apparently. 
Alec dipped his fingers into the now blessed blood. He turned to Amunda. Wake up. I actually need your help. Gather what is left of your salt and incense. Amunda pulled himself together enough to fish the salt and incense needed from his pockets. Whatever you plan to do, Amunda groaned. Do so quickly. He won't be still for much longer. I hate when Amunda is right, but he was. Abaddon growled in anger as he managed to his feet, and the feathers' effects wearing off. This mongrel's about to send you back to hell, Alec taunted. A proud boast, but honestly, the only other option was death. So either he was making a proud stand of holding firm, or proud last words. The circle now glowed blue, and I could feel that deathly chill run through my bones. The ground shook and cracked beneath our feet. It cracked even more so beneath Abaddon's. Abaddon stumbled, his wings flapping uselessly as he sunk into the floor, mighty hands gripping at the ground as it dragged him back down below the pit. I glimpsed his face just before he vanished beneath the ground, roaring in a rage of hate and dismay. I stared at the center that now dented the floor, the roaring of Abaddon now a distant memory. With a grunt, Alec attempted to stand. Amunda was moving to help him and I did the same. True, he was the reason we nearly died, but he couldn't have known that idiot minister would beckon Abaddon. You're an interesting fellow. I didn't catch your name. I decided more formal introductions were in order. The name is Alex. He grimaced in pain. And what would they call you? Bella Delavana. I grinned to him as I looked over his wounds, a devious plot coming to mind. I can heal you, if you would like. That's a very pretty name, and considering sorcery doesn't offer great insurance, I think I will take you on that offer, Alec joked. I glanced at my dark spirits. They had scattered throughout the room, slithering their way back towards me as they sensed my desire for their aid. One I instructed to channel itself into healing Alec's wounds. With some soft chanting and coaxing, the little spirit weaved through Alec's body, healing his wounds. As I thought, his blood itself had a dark power. Otherwise, the spirit wouldn't have been able to heal him as it did. Like a dentry, my spirit ended its task by slipping Asmodai's mark on his skin, right behind his ear. Amunda chimed in. I am Amunda, if you were curious. I noticed the bottle of blood in Alec's pocket and flicked my head towards it, hoping Amunda would take notice. Amunda did and wiggled his fingers to imply he was ready to snatch the potent liquid. Well, at the very least, Minister Dentry is dealt with, so for that, I thank you, I whispered, leaning forward and giving Alec a peck on the cheek, hoping it would be enough to distract Alec from Amunda's thievery. The man had more blood to let, that was for certain, so I hardly considered it a theft. With a playful grin, I turned and made my leave with Amunda. I glanced at him, and he showed me the bottle in his possession before slipping it into his coat. So, which one of you is the skillful pickpocket? Alec called back to us. I flinched. Caught red-handed, it seemed. I played it off as coy as I could, turning to him with a knowing smile. Consider it an even trade for the loss of my feather, yes? To my surprise, Alec merely waved to me. Agreed. The last thing I need to be doing is repaying favors after this mess. Sorry for the deception, then, I beamed to him. Ciao. And with that, Amunda and I left as swiftly as we could. We slipped into the black town car Amunda had purchased, and we were flying back to our condo. That was an experience, Amunda remarked. The blood, I demanded, holding out my hand. Amunda deposited the blood into my hand, and I looked it over carefully. It was Alex's, and it hummed with a dark energy all of its own. A grin spread over my face. Your master's not going to be pleased about this, Amunda reminded me. Their goal is Armageddon. I held the blood up to the window, letting the light from passing street lamps pass through it. He'll get over it. We'll report to him immediately, explain ourselves, and ask what we can do to please him. I already sealed that man to him, I said, turning to Amunda. I doubt Asmodai will forgive, but he's a demon lord. 
He wants to be the one to bring about the end times, not Abaddon's master. Amunda frowned, keeping his attention on the road. When we returned home, I quickly grabbed my bloodletting knife and one rabbit from the cage. It squeaked as I gripped it by the scruff of its neck, digging my nails into its fur. I was nervous, excited, fearful, and giddy all at the same time. A small drop of blood from the bottle soon lined my finger. I slid it over the blade and cut the rabbit's throat, spilling its blood onto the kitchen tile. I drew a sigil into a single tile and closed my eyes tightly, focusing on opening a channel to Asmodai. Amunda stood by, not sure what to do with himself. Bella, are you sure? Asmodai, Lord of Hatred and Wrath, I beseech thee to hear your servant's call to you, I chanted. I hear a loud bellow followed by the stench of sulfur, candles around the kitchen self-ignited with green flame, and Asmodai's voice soon came in clear as a day. You wrenches are all pathetic failures, he roared. The brand on my shoulder burned and I clutched it, gasping in pain. Why send Abaddon back, fool? Explain yourself or I shall make you suffer all the more. I winced and gritted my teeth. Great Lord Asmodai, I am sorry for my transgression. Abaddon threatened to kill me and my companion before I could make good on your debt. I was thinking of my service to you. Asmodai's voice grew enraged. You were thinking of your own life. It will not happen again, I begged bowing low and sliding my hands over the bloody sigil. My eyes rolled back into my skull as screams filled my ears, their shrieks of terror and agony mixing into a cacophony of noise that was drowned out only by the growing ringing which threatened to split my skull. Soon the light around me vanished, and I was left in nothing but a familiar darkness. Within the darkness, a green light glowed from above me. Looking down was the face of a man, a powerful man with a bald head and a thin beard. His eyes were dark pools of void filled with wisps of green smoke. He was adorned with heavy-looking armor. On either side sat the giant heads of a bull and a ram, their eyes glowing red and yellow respectively. Though they made up part of his massive armor, they appeared to be alive, saliva foaming at their mouths as their eyes scanned me critically. This was Asmodai. It had to be. He towered over me, his mighty frame filling my vision with his dark black and red armor. Multiple swords sat on either side of his hip, each carrying powerful magic within. One blade in particular was a long black blade with a ragged edge and an ornate silver handle. It pulses and resonates with its master, and it filled me with the familiar heat that overcame me when I took revenge on someone. I lifted my hands to him careful not to offend or enrage him. I serve you, Lord Asmodai, not Abaddon nor his master, only you. When I do your bidding, it will be your name upon my victory for the powers of hell. When the world burns, your masters will know it was your servant who brought forth hell on earth. Asmodai's eyebrow rose, and he walked around me. Heavy footsteps shook the ground. The darkness shifted behind him. It wasn't the darkness, I realized. The shifting black forms behind him were a pair of massive black feathered wings. He was magnificent. Whatever you wish for me, I'll do, I professed. I even offered you the soul of that minister who tried to bring Abaddon forth. He brought Abaddon forth, Asmodai growled. While I appreciate his soul, the cost to get it was not worthwhile. I bowed low to his feet. I also marked another... A man, yes, Alexander, Asmodai mused. Our eyes have been upon him for some time. We dislike being thought of as a jinn to grant people's wishes for the cost of a mortal soul, and Alexander has transgressed often. I smiled. So these souls will go against my debt to you, master? Asmodai scoffed. I should tear your soul from your body. Reaping your soul now would give me satisfaction and proper punishment for what you have done. He roared. I bowed low before him, on hands and knees shivering. Please, O oh Lord Asmodai, I will make this up to you. I will break the seal in your name. No one else's. I glanced upwards. Besides, it is Abaddon's own failings which led us to defeat him. I merely acted in self-preservation. 
Asmodai glared down at me before his expression softened slightly. You have a point, he gripped. My minions have already failed once. My favor with my master wanes. Abaddon should not have been bested by you and your lot so easily, so his punishment will be significant. I frowned, unsure of where my fate would lie. Asmodon grabbed me by the throat, the pain of the brand searing itself into my shoulder. There is a chance for you. One chance, wench. Listen to me and listen well. Yes, my lord, I choked. A servant of mine is waiting in a prison. His name is Andrew Sanders. He has sold me his soul for great power and strength. You are to make five potions using the blood you have received from Alexander. You are to distribute the potions to the few death row inmates inside this prison. Upon these men's deaths, the potions will allow more of my servants to enter their bodies. From there, he continued, you will prepare him as my vessel. Your vessel? I wheezed, eyes wide. I have great vengeance to bring forth, he growled. For you and I share a common adversary. Who? I gasped. The green smoke within Asmodai's eyes swirled in anger. Father Edward Thomas.